Yeah, g'day everyone, this is Nick from Electric Wheels Australia. It's Perth Electric Scooter Repairs for the locals. Um, and what I've got here at the moment, so I was just fitting around with this tire, a bit of cobweb on it. Uh, this one's an Apollo um, City, I think it is. Uh, as you can see, the cable's broken off of it. And uh, the cable runs in through there, comes straight out. There's another example of poor design um, so what I will be doing is I'll be replacing the cable uh, which I can order that in actual fact I can order that cable um, online and uh, what I'll do is I'll feed a new one in there I remove this one I have to pull the motor apart um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, have a metal shield come out from the axle all right come out with a, a horseshoe shape slot so it goes in like that and then the plate comes around and then goes on the outside covering the cable um, and the idea behind that if you come off then uh, so it makes it a horseshoe shape so the idea is that if you come off then the metal bracket or a protection piece uh, will be what gets damaged not the cable but what I'll do is I'll make sure that it is curving towards the front and then towards the back because if you fall over usually you're going forward you don't want it the other way because it'll just peel the metal back the the bracket okay the, um so it doesn't have to be anything fancy uh it can be just really thin metal um might i don't know if you've seen it but there's uh, like a, a a liquid rubber that you, in a can you can dip it it's red stuff or i suppose it's black now uh, and that all, that is good for um, covering the metal so it's not got the sharp edges. Or um, I don't know about a 3D printed version, which I can do, although my 3D printer, I just um, uh, accidentally spilt the resin all over it and in, in inside it. Um, but that's what I will be doing. Uh, I mean, otherwise it's $350 to replace the motor um, because... Uh, Distributors and manufacturers do not allow you to replace the cable only. They say, no, you need a new motor. And that's fine. They don't want to deal with it. Um, but for me, it's it's an easy job. Well, you know, relatively speaking. Uh, it's about, um, oh, just for the sake of it, a two-hour job. So it'll be about um, two-thirds the price of a brand new one. And there's nothing wrong with that. Plus, um, I supply a little bracket as well. Anyway. That's uh, that's that's about it for that one anyway, but it, it's it's uh, not the um, the uh, repair that's on my list right now because I've got something like twelve um, Segway nine bot Max G thirties uh, to do to work on, and um, particularly the tires. I think I've got about five tires to do um, six. Uh, I tell you, um, but I'm looking at a new machine, tire changing machine. Um, I've got that other one. If you look through my videos, uh, you'll see the photograph. Um, but there's another one which is excellent for the purpose of slipping on uh, the um, solids, okay, uh, the solid tires. So uh, the one I've got really doesn't do that, but certainly this other one. But I need to find. Fifteen hundred dollars, so um, thereabouts, probably a bit more because of freight and taxes. But it's about fifteen hundred dollars um, to buy it, and then I've got to get it into the country. Uh, so I'm going to have to somehow find that money. Anyway, apart from that, uh, work harder, I suppose, or charge more. So we've got here um, two controllers, one dead, one brand new. And at the moment, I've hooked up my multimeter to the ohm setting, okay, uh, to the diode. All right, now I've mentioned diode before, that there, gee, the focusing. Uh, that is a, that mode, it just basically puts a voltage across these two, from the, from the multimeter across these two, and it feeds it to the circuit. And if you've got an actual diode, um, I don't know if I can see one. Yeah, there is one on here. I saw it the other day. Uh, where would it be? Um, 
crikeys. Yeah, this is one I blew up accidentally. Good, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, so here's an example of, of diodes. Okay, uh, what they do is they allow current to flow in one direction but not the other. Um, and they're very good for providing um, short circuit um, protection. Particularly if you've like in your if you're uh, in your car and you hook up your battery the wrong way, the terminals, uh, then often in the circuit boards uh, of your vehicle, there's a diode that when when that happens, uh, it will shunt the power through the diode uh, rather than through the circuit. Um, but well, not in the case, uh, it would be a Zenit diode or something like that, which is a little bit different to those in terms of what it does or how it works. But apart from that, um, what you'll find is, is that uh, you need to put a little voltage across the circuit, because it's no voltage there, to see what it does, particularly as MOSFETs really are... Uh, um, like two diodes back to back, effectively, you, you know, in... in uh, it, it's the best way I can describe it for the layman is like having two diodes in there. So effectively what you're doing is you're doing a diode check across the MOSFET, even though it's a transistor, all right? Um, if you want to learn about that, hey, there's plenty of YouTube channels that explain uh, basic electronics. You learn about capacitors, you learn about diodes, you learn about transistors, resistors, um, coils like chokes. Uh, transformers all that kind of stuff is great to learn just get a basic understanding of what they are and in what circumstances you would use them in a real basic circuit and then you can extend from there um i still use uh such course uh, uh youtube i uh, use those videos to you know refresher it's always good so in the diode mode and i've put the positive to the positive wire on the battery uh, connection and I've connected up the negative or the common of the um, multimeter to one of the output wires of the MOSFETs. In this case, it's those two there, which are associated with the yellow cable, these two here for the blue, and the N2 for the brown, which goes to the motor. So um, now, as you can see, it's all on, and I've got an overload, all right? That's what OL stands for on a multimeter. Um, and that basically means it's effectively open circuit, if you like. Now, when I first connected this up, I was getting a reading, okay? Um, and then uh, it would then reach OL, which is fine. So that tells me that this is fine. Now, if I go for the blue, um, and brown is identical to this. Now, if I go to the blue, it won't be a second. Okay, so I've connected up the blue. And it's showing, okay, uh, let's have a look, 0.000V for volts, okay? So there's no, no, um, so it's a short, effectively. So what that means is, is that these two are fine, and that is short, okay? Um, and when that happens, any one of those, or a combination of those, when they're faulty, when you try and spin the wheel, it usually only does a half or three-quarter turn, and that's it. All right, no matter how firm you spin it, it should be theory, if the controller and everything's fine, the scooter's fine, and you spin it, it more than likely will spin two uh, revolutions. Okay, now in this case here, if we look at this one here, okay, uh, we'll have a look at this. I'll connect it up the same way just to prove a point. One be a moment. Okay, so with this one, I've done exactly the same. All right, positive, positive, and then um, common to. Uh, the blue one, okay, if you remember the other one was uh, zero volts, okay, and what's it here? It's got overload volts, so in other words, it's effectively uh, working perfectly, okay? So if you, uh, and if you're one to want to fiddle around with your scooter, first things first is to get your tools, okay? Get your um, hex keys or allen keys, if you like, Get your um, um, Torx, T-O-R-X, um, bits. Uh, get some screwdrivers. 
uh, and uh, a multimeter okay it's got the basics it doesn't have to have a transistor checker which is it would say hfe or something like that as long as it's got which practically i think there's every single uh, multimeter has that is the ohms all right that's the omega okay ohms for resistance and the other two options although this has got cap for capacitance so if you've got a capacitor we'll check that as well all right now um if you have problems with your scooter and you want to open it and have a look get this first don't call me or email me or text me and say i've got a problem with my scooter i need to know how to fix it and if you haven't got a multimeter there then don't 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 contact me because i'm going to say have you got a multimeter and if you don't i'm going to say go out and get one the reason being is because you won't know until you swap that you could turn around and swap out the motor and it still doesn't work which um, someone has done swap out the controller and finally work out and you just spent money unnecessarily okay these you can buy online at ebay or something like that for about 15 20 25 dollars that is cheap okay if you're riding a scooter because you can't afford a car and you i understand that but this is a critical device okay and please don't use it um, around the household to check, check the TV and stuff like that. Because in the case of um, LED TVs, they've got four or 500 volts sitting in the back of them, okay? Uh, so, you know, that kind of thing you just don't touch. Um, you have to be really careful. Um, other than that, all I can say is good luck. And as I said in the start, Whenever you fiddle around with anything that's got power to it, disconnect the power, all right? Disconnect the battery, and then you can do the testing, because you don't need that. The idea also with battery, um, uh, removing batteries, that you can actually test the battery at the opposite connectors to these, you know, um, that would normally go into the controller. But that is no guarantee. If you've got a 52-volt scooter, all right, and it says that the battery is 52 volts, okay, and you read the battery and it says 52 volts or 48 or it seems to be reasonably high okay it doesn't mean that the battery is good if you're having problems with the scooter in terms of it shutting down uh, soon after that you ride it or it's not getting the range anymore as i've explained in other videos which you should be watching if you've got issues with your um, scooter in that regard watch that and then you'll get an idea of what i'm talking about all right if you've got any questions ask away and uh but if it's about your scooter and you've got issues like this buy your multimeter first and then ask the question if you want to repair it yourself bye for now